Greetings everyone, Brett here with Hammerhead Model making back with another full build video. Today we're going to be looking at Hobby Boss's F84 in 170 second scale. Now typically I start off my full build videos with a short unboxing, but seeing as how I didn't actually film that portion, you get a little glimpse of the final product before we jump into it. So this kit is labeled as one of their quote-unquote easy kits. Um, if you've seen my F8F Bearcat video, you'll kind of get an idea of what we're, what we're in for. The entirety of the cockpit consists of four pieces. Two parts for the seat, one part for the instrument panel, and one part for the control column. So assembling the cockpit is extremely straightforward. Now you might notice that there's an extremely large ejector pin marking in the pan of the seat. That would definitely require some um, work to get rid of. Uh, I think if it was really going to bother you, then you would probably just want to see if you could find an aftermarket seat or cover it with seat belts. Um, during my test fitting, I realized that the clear parts, the canopies are quite thick and you're really not going to see much in it anyways. So I just, I just opted not to deal with it and not give myself a headache. Additionally, when I was building this kit, I wanted to see if I could build it in under a week. So I really wasn't going to worry about doing any kind of modifications or adding any scratch built items. I was just going to build it out of the box. As you could see there, as, as, I, as I was painting the or priming the interior of the cockpit, the actual interior cockpit part is all molded into the fuselage. It's all one piece. So there's, there's very few parts to build up the cockpit. But in all fairness to Hobby Boss, it's, it's actually fairly detailed in there. You do get side panels with switches and, and dials and such, uh, details on the floor where the rudder pedals would be. So, I mean, it's not for for how minimal parts it is, it's, it's not terrible. So here I'm just painting up the interior green color. You'll notice that I have masked off around the canopy. This is just to avoid overspray on the fuselage. Since I am planning on doing this as a natural metal finish, I wanted to avoid as much type of contaminants on the surface of the air aircraft and so normally I wouldn't necessarily worry too much about that but in this case it it seemed appropriate and uh, another thing I like about these really early jets just as we are transitioning from like World War II into the jet age I, re I, I really like that a lot of these jets still use the interior green color um, as opposed to moving towards like all black or gray colors of modern jets I just think it looks really interesting and it's good contrast against the um, the bare metal finish of the rest of the aircraft. So here I'm just doing some detail painting. This is using Vallejo acrylic paints. And uh, it's, it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. There's not a lot of color to this aircraft, at least with, with the level of detail that is in here. So uh, it's really just a matter of going around, picking out the details in black, and uh, just being careful to avoid getting paint where you don't need it. So this is... The part there that I'm painting is the what's going to make up the HUD. Here you can see where I'm painting the sidewall detail and the side console detail. So you can see there's there's a little detail in there. Um, nothing fan, nothing you know, outrageous. Just do a little bit of dry brushing. The uh, the instrument panel itself actually isn't terrible. So a little dry brushing goes a long way. Here I'm just using a light gray to dry brush the black parts. This will just kind of help pick out some of those details and then for the interior green parts I'm using like a tan buff color to to dry brush and highlight so this just helps add a little you know glint to the to the edges here I'm going back over the actual instrument faces just with a pure black this will help contrast against the dry brush portions and I think it'll help make the instrument faces stand out a little bit more I wasn't going to attempt to you know hand paint dial details on here again like I said you're not going to see much with how thick the canopy is but still helps to give a little bit of a hint now I'm just hitting it with a little bit of gloss on the face of each dial just to kind of help sell the effect and uh, just using the aqua gloss for this and it, it it's it won't dry quite that you know quite that shiny and reflective but It'll still be nice. Doing a little bit of a pin wash here. I'm actually doing this straight over the paint. I have not added a uh, gloss coat to this like I normally would. Again, I, I wasn't really going to try and go really heavy handed with the weathering on this. So I'm just really keeping the, the wash to, to basically to a pin wash it just in the recesses in the corners here. So with all the painting done, we can get our cockpit assembled. 
it's just a matter of dropping in the instrument panel, control stick, and seat into their respective slots in the cockpit floor. So again, straightforward. You, you really won't see much. It's a fairly small cockpit. Uh, I, I'm sure if you wanted to opt to open the canopy, you, there's awfully room for uh, detailing and adding extra details there. But So here the canopy has been installed. We're just going to get that glued on so that we can move on to the rest of the construction. But again, you can see that it, it, it is difficult to see into the cockpit. So... Uh, being an easy build kit, it, you basically just get the upper and lower half of the fuselage that make up. Um, a, a, the wings are all solid one piece as well, so there's no like top or bottom, which is kind of nice. You don't have seams you have to worry about, but uh, they're fairly simple wings. But again, it does they do compromise on certain details, like in the wheel wells and things like that, but. It is what it is. These little side panels on the side of the fuselage, I'm not quite sure why they were kept as separate panels, but these really didn't fit. And you can actually see there where I trimmed it a little too much on that one side. Uh, those gaps will have to be addressed. Nose cone going on. Fit here was generally pretty good overall. And uh, tail cone going on. So, you know, you don't really have to spend a too much time cleaning th things up. Here we can do the upper halves of the wingtip fuel tanks. And finally, the horizontal stabilizers. Now, in hindsight, I should have left these off. And you'll see why later, but, you know, 2020 and all that. So here I have, I've actually been using two different uh, filling methods here. So on the wing root, you can see there's already like a white line in there. That was the Vallejo plastic putty to fill in that gap. And then on the side of the fuselage here where I'm sanding, I am using a Tamiya uh, white putty to, f to clean up that seam line. And, and in reality, it wasn't that bad. I probably overdid it with the putty, but you know, better be safe than sorry. So just going through the process of getting it sanded, here's that plastic putty I was telling you about. So against what I normally do, I actually opted to do a clean aircraft on this one. So no ordnance. Uh, I think part of that was just because I was trying to get through this build quickly, but also I it, this this jet the F eighty four has some really unique lines that I just I thought it was I think it looks really good just clean, so I filled in the holes that were designed to accept the rocket pylon so it, it would carry a bunch of rockets, and then additionally you could see I added the pylons for the bomb racks as well, and I will need to, to trim off those connecting pieces to uh to clean that up a little bit so just a matter of removing those with my my clippers and then cleaning up the the space where that was left so normally the aircraft would allow for i think it's something like 12 rockets and then two bombs uh, so you you do get some decent options but i opted for a clean look here i am installing the components for the air brake which is surprisingly that that little space there where the air brake would sit is quite detailed. I mean, there's, there's, you know, hoses and wires and structural detail in there. It's, it's rather impressive. Additionally, you could go through the trouble of drilling out the air brake and, uh, you know, kind of stepping that up, but wasn't, wasn't in the cards for this build. You can also see that I filled in a lot of those gaps around those side panels. So now with all the basic construction done, we can move on to painting. Because I'm going to be doing a natural metal finish, and I was kind of, I kind of wanted to go for more of like a restored aircraft look. I was going to go for super high shine. And so to start off, I am using the Alclad Gloss Black Base. So this is going to both double as my primer and as my base for metallics. When properly thinned, this paint goes on, or this, this primer goes on beautifully and leaves a very, very shiny surface. You do want to make sure that you've thoroughly cleaned the model before you do that. You don't want any thumbprints, fingerprints, you know, oils from your fingers, anything dust on there. So I wipe the whole thing down with isopropyl alcohol before painting. But you can see it starts to build up this really nice glossy coat. Um, it probably took me about three full coats before I was happy with, with how it looked. And, and you do want to be careful when you're spraying at like right angles, like at the wing root. If you get some overspray areas, it can kind of dull the finish. But moving on, we're going to be using Alclad's Airframe Aluminum as our metallic coat. Now, this is an extremely delicate and thin 
paint, even for Alclad in their in their normal metallic range. And this requires a lot of really, really thin coats to build up to get the shine, at least the shine that I was going for. So I think in the end, I ended up doing about eight really thin coats. So I'd spray the whole thing with thin coat, give it about two or three minutes, then go on to the next coat. And just keep doing that, and you, you keep building that up until you get the the shine that you want and the you know how much you want the the black showing through from underneath because you can see at the beginning it's still pretty dark but here after about our eight coats you can see we've got a good solid shiny metallic coat all over the aircraft so quite pleased with it now because the alclad paints generally are pretty delicate you'll want to be careful when doing masking so i allowed so i allowed about 24 hours for the gloss black base to dry before doing the metallic coat and then i gave the metallic coat about 48 hours to dry before moving on to doing this kind of painting and even still i opted to use as little tape as possible um, using post-it notes when i could because post-it notes are very low tack and can be a good option in a pinch so trying to minimize the amount of tape i'm using how much tape i'm actually putting on the aircraft just because i want to try and avoid as much damage as i can to the the metallic coat but in the end i was actually surprised with how well the alclad uh, airframe aluminum held up to the masking i had zero lift off zero areas of trouble or issue with the masking tape so very pleased very happy so here you can see i'm removing the masking from the anti-glare panel. I really like that the anti-glare panel like extends from the front of the aircraft almost all the way to the back. I assume that's because the pilot would be looking back and you you know they wouldn't want to be getting sun glint off the back spine of the aircraft. Either way, I really like the look. So really pleased with how this is turning out and how well the metallic color held up to the to the painting. So here we're gonna do a little bit of a steel color on the exhaust area. Uh, this is, you know, on the Aurora aircraft, it was slightly different. And then finally, we're going to pick out a few panels in a, sl in a slightly different shade of aluminum. This, this aluminum is a little bit more dull than the aircraft or the airframe aluminum. So this just kind of helps add a little bit of variety. I didn't do too much. Again, I was kind of going for more of like a restored Warbird kind of a look as opposed to like an actual, uh, you know, period use type aircraft. So I didn't, I wasn't going to go too crazy on, on the, uh, the panel variation there. Now, <clears throat> the decals are really a mixed bag. Some of the decals, like for example, this this uh, wraparound nose decal, were very brittle and did not want to come off the backing paper and were really were a challenge to work with. And in hindsight, I should have cut out that little night profile and just painted the nose red as opposed to using the decal. But um, I, you know, I was trying to make it work. Uh, additionally, the tail decal here was really a big pain, and, and you can see why I probably should have left the stabilizers off. It would have made applying these decals so much easier. Additionally, if I had chosen to paint this as well, it, that it would have made that easier as well. So hindsight is leave the horizontal stabilizers off till the end of the build. It'll just make your life easier. So those decals were a challenge, but then these decals... Um, on the side of the fuselage and some of the ones that go on the wing were amazing and i was really concerned because they're large decals with a lot of carrier film and i was concerned that you'd get this huge outline of carrier film on my nice shiny metallic surface but it, but once i got them on and like flattened out and pressed into the into the surface the carrier film pretty much disappeared i mean it was literally like magic and i was so impressed with how well these decals held up not so much the other ones, but these ones were great. The uh, the National Insignias as well were pretty good. They didn't have as much carrier film, but still, they, they laid down pretty nicely. And uh, so, yeah, mixed bag on the decals. So moving on to weathering, I'm not going to do much for weathering. Really, it's going to consist of giving everything a nice um, aqua gloss coat. This is just, this is just going to help seal in all of our work um, and protect everything, both the metallic coat and the decals. And uh, this is this is the first time I've used the aqua gloss on this project. So I, again, I was trying to minimize the amount of layers of paint I was putting onto this. So, uh, and I was a little concerned the aqua gloss was going to dull down the shine a little bit. But honestly, I don't know that I could see any difference. So this is fully glossed at this point, and it still looks pretty pretty shiny to me. So 
very pleased with how it turned out. So as far as weathering goes, really all I'm going to do is just give it a panel wash. The uh, this Hobby Boss kit, despite the fact that it is a you know it is labeled as an easy build kit, um, the the surface detail is really nice. Nice panel lines, fairly decent rivet detail, uh, very consistent all throughout the entire model. So it it really would benefit from a panel wash just to kind of help bring out those details and add a little variety to the surface of the model. So I'm just going through and and adding the wash all over the aircraft. And again, I was a little concerned that the enamel wash was going to interact with the the metallic coat, um, but that's kind of the purpose of putting the gloss coat on the aqua gloss coat on is to help seal that in and protect it, and it did its job. So once the wash dries, it's just a matter of wiping off the excess with a dry paper towel, or in some of the harder to reach areas, a small cotton bud. This will just help you kind of refine and clean up those areas that are a little bit more troublesome than, than you can reach. So at this point, uh, wrapping things up, really what I'm doing here is just trying to kind of spot on some matte coat onto the anti-glare panel. Since it, everything was gloss coated earlier, in reality, the, the, the anti-glare panel was designed specifically not to be shiny. So I was trying really careful here, really f narrow focus on my airbrush here to get that painted. Uh, without going, you know, overspray too much onto the metallic portions. And I think overall I did a pretty good job. I also hit some of the, the larger decals like the National Insignias with the matte coat as well, just to bring that shine down a little bit. But at this point we can start removing the canopy masking. And it, this really required a lot of, you know, kind of a delicate touch because I wanted to avoid both scratching the clear part, but also like the painted frames but got there in the end. Now we can start kind of adding the last final bits, the detail bits. We've got landing gear going on and getting this all attached. Very large, you know, solid attachment points. So no, no issues going on here. I, it was at this point during the build where I was actually a little concerned that um, I hadn't put any nose weight in the aircraft. There's really not a lot of room for it because of the way that the kit's designed. But fortunately, this... This barely just sits nose heavy, so it's it's pretty it's good. You don't have to worry. Landing gear gets fit in nice and snug, and now we can do the final reveal. So all in told, um, this kit took me six days to build, and literally half of that was just waiting for the gloss black and the metallic paints to dry. It went really quickly. I had a lot of fun building this kit. I mean, I would absolutely build this kit again. I think they actually have a boxing with um, US Air Force Thunderbird decals, and I would really like to do that. That would be a lot of fun. Great little kit. I think I paid like $14 for it on Sprue Brothers or something. It was cheap, builds up quickly, looks really nice. So highly recommend it. And if, if you're interested in this jet, I know Tamiya makes a 72nd scale version of this jet as well. I think they make the F-84G, uh, which is arguably a better kit. But, you know, if, if you can get a hold of this one, I think it's definitely worth your time and uh, really enjoyed doing it. And also, just because if, if you don't mind indulging me, I did take it outside to take a few glamour shots outside just to be, get that nice, like, sunny reflection and uh, just really happy with it, so... If you've made it this far, thank you. Uh, I need to give a huge shout out to all of my patrons and for helping make content like this possible and supporting this channel. So we'll see you on the next video. Take care.